is another word of God through Jesus Christ, street and outreach ministry, raw and uncut productions. Perfect time for the word. God bless you. We're getting ready to get into a powerful word. I'm getting ready to do some study. Y'all want to study with me? Come on and let's uh, let's see. You're watching the word of God through Jesus Christ Street and Irish Telecast, and I'm very grateful that you're here. Okay. Um, you can reach the ministry by calling four seven five three zero zero three eight. Five zero. And thank you so much for being a part of this broadcast. And watch this. Don't get caught up in the theatrics, but get caught up in the word. God bless you. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman Jr. The Lord has assigned me as apostle, teacher, and prophet of the word of God through Jesus Christ, Street and Outreach Ministry. Thank you for joining the ministry. For this broadcast that God is doing today. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't even know if he's going to have friends with me or not. I don't know. But we're going to find out. You can reach the ministry at 475-300-3850 24 hours. The ministry's website is also on the screen. So that way you'll know how to join us on the web. Not only that, but periodically there will be the cash app link on the screen so you can share love offerings to partner with us as God uses us to help others in street and outreach ministry. There's always ongoing fundraisers because God uses the ministry to help others just like he did when he walked this earth. God bless you and let's get in here and find out what it is the Lord want to say unto us. Come on. And now, to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, with Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. God bless you, and enjoy the message. Thank you, Augustine. 
रहे हैं चलो Father, in Jesus' name, forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for our shortcomings. Forgive us for our faults and for our wrongs. Lord, we. Thank you for blessing us to be able to come before you. I ask that you bless all of us that are here right now. I ask, Lord, that you hear our prayer when we call out to you, as you promised to Solomon. We ask, Lord, that you that you come in our lives and that you wash us, purge us, and cleanse us. Give us the desire to want to change. Give us the desire to want to go in the direction that you would have us to go. Lord, we ask that you water this ground even overnight tonight, and that you alert those, oh God, that you want to talk to. We advertise, we spread the word, we let it be known that the Lord was going to be doing a work right here in this place. We ask, Lord, that the effort is not for nothing. The Lord, that you should produce fruit by what you have sent us to do. That you should get all the glory all the things and all the praise. And now give us something to spiritually chew on. Minister to each and every one of us on the level that we're at. We need to hear from you. Not from men. We don't need to be entertained. We have television for that. But we just want to hear from you. Feed us, nurture us, minister to us, strengthen us, educate us, feed us deep stuff. We've heard surface teaching for too long. It has not broken any chains. It has not freed us from the oppression that we have faced and went through. So we ask, Father, that you do the teaching. That you make me usable and use me. Fill me with the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. Give me a spiritual understanding of your word. And I sure need your strength to hold me up as you're doing now. In Jesus' name we thank you, we pray, amen. I'd like to ask those with Bibles to turn to Genesis chapter 1. We're going to notice a couple of scriptures. Sometimes it's easy to seem like that we could lose heart or even get discouraged because you figure that when people know there's a revival going on, that they would run to it. But this is not the case in the earth realm because Sometimes there's patterns set. And it takes the Lord to show us the difference. At any revival, at 
anything dealing with the word, the only bait to use is the word of God. <laughs> we put the word out there. We put the word out in the soil, in the atmosphere. I hear God saying something, but I'm not allowed to say it. And then you watch God draw. Sometimes God will move slow. And we'll wonder, what is he doing? Sometimes he'll move fast. And we'll say, what is he doing? Genesis chapter 1, I'm going to start at verse 26, and I'm reading out of the King James Version, and it reads this way. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb-bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. <laughs> to you it shall be for me and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for me. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Jump to chapter 2, we're going to read verses 1 through 7. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created in me. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. If you can real quick turn to the book of James chapter 1 right after the book of Hebrews. I'm going to read six verses, verses 12 through 18. And it reads on this wise, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then 
when lust have conceived it bringeth forth sin and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death do not err my beloved brethren every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the father of lights with whom is no variableness neither shadow of turning of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures the thought that the Lord gave me concerning this is we shouldn't be blaming God for the bad that we see the title is everything that God made has a purpose and is very good Father, in Jesus' name, we ask that you bless our ears because your word is already blessed. And that you minister not only to us, but someone is at a distance listening. Listening to the message. That someone in this vicinity that is confused, that's going through some things. I know because thou has said that. And I ask, Lord, that you should bring them forth in Jesus' name that the word should be medicine unto them. We do the teaching. In Jesus' name we thank you and we pray. Amen. In this, this time, this world, this generation, this era, there's, there's so much going on. And we put too much on God and not enough on the enemy. We just read in the book of James that every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above. This brother James that wrote this book of James was the Lord's brother. He was actually called James the Less. And is believed because of his size, because he was small. But in verse 16, this brother said, do not err. Meaning, today's slang would be don't get it twisted. The word err means don't make a mistake. Don't be confused. And in verse 17, he went on to say every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Blessings. And coming down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. That means with God, there's no change. He doesn't change. He doesn't change. He's the same God that kept us up when we least suspected, when we didn't even know that he was working on our behalf. There's a lot of things that we haven't experienced in life because God has always been there to guard us even when we didn't know it. He's brought us from so much and yet we're disappointed. We. He said in Romans chapter 3, there's none righteous. No, not one. But we blame God for everything that's going on. We blame God for 
all of this death that's taking place, all of the crime in the neighborhoods, all of the things that happen to our children, even the afflictions that some of our children go through, we blame God. If we don't succeed, we blame God. We say, well, it must not have been God's will. And that's not true. Every good gift, every perfect gift, comes down from heaven. When God created man, he created man with a purpose. The Bible says in the image of God created he him. And then what God did is he took that image and he divided it and created them. And when he did it, he blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. So that tells us that God created male and female for the purpose of procreation. But it's even gotten to the point where we have stopped ourselves from being able to function and produce in the very ways that God made us to. For our reasons. People now change their bodies. Surgery. If they're overweight, they have a surgery to take a shortcut to become underweight. And while they may accomplish losing the weight, they still gain other things. Other sickness, other problems. Because we are in the business of thinking that we're right and God is wrong. A woman says, I've been a man all my life. So she has a surgery with some ungodly doctor assisting her into changing her gender. Which still it can't be done because no matter what they do on the outside, on the inside, you're still who God made you. You can change a body, but you cannot change the inside. And there's nothing worse than a woman who has become a man and is still emotional. Or a man who has become a woman and he's still masculine. We shouldn't blame God for the bad things we see, but we do. People get, go to Hollywood and they become actors and actresses. They, they go and they start off okay and then they get caught up in drugs and alcohol and Hollywood just brings them in and, and then they, they have to take on the image and look a certain kind of way in order to be accepted or to paint this picture and then the people that are watching them look at them and say they look good not even realizing that half of what you see is an illusion makeup the time some people have to spend in a makeup chair before they get in front of the camera When God made everything, it was good. Verses 4, 10, 12, 18, 21, and 25 in Genesis chapter 1 said that everything was good. The Hebrew word good, well the English word good, is from the Hebrew word what? and it's used 559 times in the new in the old testament told is and it means good 361 times of that 559 
72 times of it, it means better. 20 times it means well. Eight times it means best. Four times it means precious. Three times it means fine. Three times it also means wealth. Two times it means beautiful. Two times it also means favor. It also means cheerful, at ease, joyful, loving, pleasant, ready, sweet, festive, pleasing, best, and right. Here's the funny thing. Everything God made was right. Wasn't nothing wrong. It was right. Everything God made was right. Everything God made was fine. Everything God made was at ease. Everything God made was joyful. Everything God made was best. It was pleasing. Pleasing to who? To God. To God. So now here we are in a time where if you watch politics, you see the politicians making all these promises that the ones before them made that they're not going to keep. And people believe it. How some of us have fallen for it. We've gotten from under theocracy. We don't want to do it God's way. Uh oh. God tried to bless us. This, this is what he did. Again, when he made man, everything was good. It was at ease. There was no stress. We actually leave this world early because of things that we put in our body and things that we do to ourselves. Because we think we know better. And we don't. All of us. Food is changing. It don't taste the same. It don't look the same. Family is changing. Families don't sit down and eat together anymore. Not usually. But they used to. What a lot of people don't know is the table originally was made for the purpose of sitting down and discussing things. That's what the table was made for. If you look up the purpose the table was made, that's what it was made for. To sit down and discuss things. That's why you got that term, bring things to the table. Let's put it on the table. Because the table was designed for discussion. And so later on, people started bringing food to the table and families discussed things. Not no more. We want to do things our way. There's no blessing in that. So God put man in his garden. Adam. <laughs> and when God put him in the garden, he said something very simple to Adam. He said, in chapter 2, verse 15, it says, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Simple as that. That was the point. To dress it, to keep it. Dress it means decorated. Keep it means guarded. That's what Adam's responsibility was. Nothing more. Nothing less. Now, God is... He's a warning God because in verse 9 it says, Out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. So every tree he made, it was pleasant to the sight, that means it looked good, and it was good for food. It was all right to eat it. There wasn't a famine. There was not a shortage. And then scripture says, The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So now in the middle of the garden there were two trees. Two. And God said to the man, verse 16, he commanded him. He 
said, of every tree in the garden, thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And death means separation. So God said, the day that you eat from that tree, you're going to be separated from me. Why? Because not all, you're not going to just know good anymore. Now you're going to have a choice. A choice. A choice. We have choices. And we run with that. I can do what I want to do because I have a choice. And the truth of the matter is that is not true. We don't have a choice. The only thing we have a choice about is this. Our choice is who are we going to choose to follow. That's the choice we got. But we don't have a choice to do what we want to do because if God calls somebody, they're going to follow God no matter which way they follow him. They can either follow God kicking, screaming, sick, half dead, laying on their deathbed, and finally say, okay, Lord, which then is really too late. I mean, you'll do what he say, but you're not going to be able to enjoy doing it. Because we end up dealing with things that God didn't want us to deal with. Choices. He told Adam, of every tree in the garden you may freely eat, just don't eat from that tree. So now, <laughs> don't eat from that tree. Don't eat from it. And, and God, being a, a, not only a God of warning, but a God of provision, because he looked at man and he said, it is not good that the man be alone. So, so here's what we're going to be dealing with the next two days of this revival. The third day is going to is going to end up being about Jesus Christ who's the remedy, who's the solution to the problem. Tonight what we need to just pay attention to is all of this stuff that's bad, we need to stop blaming God cuz he didn't do it. People sick in the hospital, God didn't do that. People leaving this world early, God didn't do that. People homeless, people don't have this, don't have that. It is not God that did it. He, listen, every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from heaven. That means good revelation comes from heaven. A good word comes from God. Sometimes the word of the Lord has sent a word of correction too. And that word of correction, while on the surface seems bad, it has good intentions. Because if we take the correction, then we can be at ease. Good. At ease. Good. At ease. That's one of the words that told means. At ease. Even when it comes to our life. God has watched us suffer so long. He saw Adam. He done brought, made these animals. He brought them to Adam. And he told Adam, whatever you name them, that's what the angels, that's what the animals would be called. So Adam named these animals. And God just stood back and let him do it. But he saw that Adam was still alone. The Lord made us to be social individuals. So when you see people that say God is my husband, that's a lie. Because God is not going to come down here and he is not going to physically love you. He's not going to do it. That's a trick of the enemy to even believe such doctrine. When a man says I don't need a woman because God is my wife, he's lying. He's lying because God is not going to come down here and physically love a man. God is a spirit, John 4 and 24. Jesus said that. So our relationship with God is what? Spiritual. 
So what God did, he said, in the earth realm, I know you're going to be lonely. I know you're going to be by yourself. I know that sometimes you're going to want to share things with somebody. I will bless you. And he put together a covenant called marriage. Marriage. Some people just want to be a partner. Some people just want to date. The Lord told Adam to name all these animals. The funny part is, in verse 18 it says in chapter 2, And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meat for him. And then it says, Out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found in help meat for him. Just wasn't. He had all these animals and he named them. That's, that's just as bad as getting, your, getting a toy and not even want to play with it. Or getting a pair of shoes or a pair of pants or an outfit that we always want. We I gotta get that outfit. We finally get the money, we get that outfit, and then we get it and we lose interest. Adam named all these animals. He exercised his dominion. And after he did that, God said, not Adam, God said. Still, there's no suitable helper. Okay, so we've gotten out of the purpose why God created us. He told Adam to dress the garden and keep it, to decorate it and to guard it. He told Adam to do that. And that means it was Adam's responsibility to protect everything in the garden. It was his responsibility. So when God made Eve and brought Eve to Adam, it was Adam's responsibility to protect her, to guard her, to make sure nothing happens to her. And she was made to be a suitable helper for Adam, so she was, was being, God brought her to him and gave her to him. Why? To be a blessing to him. Not to come in his life and say, I want to change the garden around. Where the tree is over there, I want to move it over there. I want to do this. I want, it was already established. It was already organized. Because God already organized. It would have been a blessing for both of them to enjoy it together as it was and build on it. Not rearrange it, but build on it. Decorate it. That pole is standing right there, but if we throw stuff on it, we can decorate it. But it don't mean take it down. We're changing things without knowing why we change it. <laughs> I tell you what's funny. I, real, I realized that when God gave us a thumb, he knew what he was doing. Try not to use your thumb. Try to use your four fingers with no thumb and see how much you accomplish. You won't accomplish a lot. I was told by some people that had an operation on their Achilles heel. When they had it done, their balance was off a little bit. When God formed us, he knew exactly what he was doing and why he was doing it. We need to let him God. Let him bless us. Stop fighting God. When we resist the blessing, we're resisting God. We're resisting the words that God has given us. And this is what's going on in all 
all the neighborhoods. And I hate to say this, but I got to be real. The scripture says that for children to honor their father and mother, honor their mother and father, that they might live long in the land that the Lord, that God giveth them. And unfortunately, a lot of children are leaving this world early. And part of the reason is because they don't have any respect. And a lot of times they don't have no respect because they're not being trained at home. When scripture says train a child up in the way he should go while he's young, train in the Hebrew means to put him on the mark. If he tends to go off a little bit as a parent, we're supposed to put him back on the mark. Because the Bible says a son left to himself brings shame to his mother. And it's true. Kids get, go to jail. And the first thing the judge want to know is, what was your family life like? And unfortunately, if he got a mother that been trying hard to raise him by herself, and this child is just getting in all kinds of trouble, it's embarrassing to the mother. And some of the reasons that it's embarrassing is because when they was like five, the mother was like, isn't that cute that they was doing wrong stuff? No. As parents, our job is to train the children for heaven, to go to heaven. See, here's what a lot of people don't know because a lot of ministers don't teach this. That is when you get to heaven, if your child makes it there, your child will no longer be your child. If we make it to heaven and our mother has left this world and went on there, our mother will no longer be our mother. If our father has left this world and went to heaven and then we get there, our father is no longer our father because according to what the Holy Bible says, in heaven there's one father and his name is God and we are of the brotherhood. Brethren. Look in scripture. King James Version. You hear the word a lot. Brethren. James, uh, John 1 and 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. The sons of God. Angels are sons of God also. You'll never find a female angel, because there just isn't. God is our father. We are his spiritual children by spiritual adoption. Okay, the Jews are his chosen people. All right. They, they're born Jewish, they have a, a birthright, but we are engrafted in God's family by spiritual adoption. By accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And not only that, but the only way we can come to Jesus Christ is if the Father draw us. And God the Father, again, He is a spirit. What kind of spirit? He is the Holy Spirit. And he draws us. Now this is so funny because we can't go to the Son unless the Father draw us, but we can't go to the Father unless we come to the Son. So apart from him, we're stuck. All right. So God promised us stuff. There's blessings we're asking God for. And God said he'll give them to us. But the blessings are conditional. If you're not in God's family, then the blessings that God has for his children, you cannot get them. Now I got to be real and put this out there. You cannot follow Buddha and think that you're going to get the blessings of God. It doesn't work that way. You cannot follow Allah and get the blessings of God. You can't do it. Not the blessings of Yahweh, of Elohim, of El Shaddai. There's no way. And so now, now let's go deeper. As ministers, when God calls you into ministry, this is what you have to tell people and not be shy about it. It's easy to become not light. When God uses you to go and tell the truth because the world is 
2 Corinthians 4 and 4 says that the devil is the god of this world and what happens is every demon that works for him this world is where they have their playground at so the spirit of compromise is right here in this world and it affects Christians if we eat from the wrong tree so God doesn't believe now catch this revelation because we're going to close with this one God doesn't believe in being unequally yoked. You can be saved and still be unequally yoked. Because God is a God that deals with levels. How, how do we know that? Because God said as high as the, hev as the heaven is from the earth, Isaiah chapter 55, I'm not, I got to look at it because I sure don't want to misquote it. I don't want him to deal with me. Not on that. Isaiah 55 verse 8 says, let, let me go back. Yeah, verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth. Now he's talking levels. Levels. For as the heavens are higher than the earth. And he said heavens with an S. So are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Then in verse 10 he says, For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Okay, so Second Chronicles 714, everybody uses that scripture. And it was a blessing that it was read here tonight. But let's chew on this as we pray. Let's chew on this. Solomon was used by God to build a temple. David who was a man after God's own heart, he said, I'll build it. And God said, no, because you got too much blood on your hands. God loved David. But the truth of the matter is, David's hands were not clean. So David's son Solomon was the one that built it. And Solomon was the very one that God warned him, don't be marrying nobody that's not from your lineage. Don't take a lot of horses unto yourself. Don't take a lot of gold and silver unto yourself. Don't do it. So then people say, all right, yeah, but God gave Solomon all his wealth. He gave Solomon the gift of being wealthy, but sometimes we got to learn how to say no. Because the very thing Solomon had, it got him in trouble. But here's what Solomon did in that seventh chapter, is he prayed over that temple. And God said, as long as my name is mentioned in this temple, I hear it. Because it was built for his glory. What are we giving to God? All right, so we want to do things, and then after that we get in the gym, and then now we want to go to God. We get with the wrong person, we get in the gym, now we go to God. We hang with the wrong people, we get in the gym, now we want to go to God. But a little while ago, we didn't want to go to him. He was warning us, we didn't listen. So then after this person is sent by the enemy in our life to tear our life up, then we get in the jam, then it's, oh Lord! And when God knows that we mean it from our heart, he's a forgiving God and he blesses us. And what do we do after that? Same thing. Sometimes God let us off too easy. He does. And it's because he loves us. But here's the sad thing. Sooner or later we got to understand about the character of God. We need to stop blaming him for all the bad stuff that we see. Because he's not doing it. If he brings somebody in your life and they lure you away from God and they don't encourage the holiness in you, then God didn't send you. If, if a woman comes in a, a, a brother's life and she come in and tear up the ministry, she tear up his life, she tear up everything. Got the poor brother walking around confused. 
God didn't send her. He didn't send her. Now sometimes God will send us because sometimes God will allow us to have stuff to show us our heart. That's what we need to do. Lord, show me me. A lot of people say they know God said Job didn't do nothing wrong. He didn't. But Job was self-righteous. If you study about it, you find out he was a king. That's why he had all that substance. Job had. He was the second king of Edom. It's in the book of Genesis. He had all this substance. And he said he feared being poor. He feared losing all his stuff. He said, that which I have feared has come upon me. And God wanted Job to know it's not about your stuff. We shouldn't get caught up on stuff. Because when we get caught up on stuff, what happens when we lose it? Sometimes God will allow us to lose stuff to show us that's where your heart was. He's concerned. All right. It's a blessing that we're here on these grounds tonight. And I hear the word. It's a blessing, Sister Prophetess, if every child here gets a toy. One, because he sang. Tyrese didn't work security, but, you know, he, yeah, he did. So I got to tally up with him. Zion is sitting down, behaving. So she should get a toy. Trevon too. He should get a toy because he's sitting down. He's sitting still next to his mother. He's not running around, acting up or nothing. If you say something, you ain't gonna get one. You got one coming because you were singing. See, let the Lord bless you. Just let God bless you. That's the whole point. God loved to bless children too. But you got to behave. It's not hard. You just got to behave. So God can bless you. Because all of us are his children that believe in him. So he tells us to do the same thing. We got to behave. All of us have something in common. God woke us up this morning. He woke us up. He blessed us to have something to wear. He blessed us to, to be in our right mind, which means that we have good sense. We're able to understand, to talk, to relate to each other. Tomorrow is going to be a, another night, and it's going to be awesome. These chairs are not going to be set up this way tomorrow. They're going to be set up differently. Father, in Jesus' name, forgive us for our sins. Please bless these toys. Let them be used for your glory. Let them be a blessing to the children. Let them love and appreciate it. Let them use it joyfully and to have fun. In Jesus' name, we thank you for the means, the donations, the help, the all of that. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we pray. Amen. Uh-oh, wait a minute, brother. Don't mess it up now. We were doing it good a minute ago. No. If you was going to get another one, you just messed it up when you got up. Just be cool. We get ready to close. We get ready to stop. Anybody got anything to say? Any question about anything that was said? Any question? Any question? No matter what it is. Anybody got a question? If you hear something you didn't understand, is there anything that you got a question about? If not, say no. Just shake your head. No. You got a question? No? You got a question? You got a question? You got a question? What? No? What's the question? Jesus died for us. Huh? 
हाँ वही से What did he say? Satisfied. 